make you big for your next breath. So you best be on the creek bank late in the shade. Chewing on a hickory twig, pass that bottle, I'll have me a swig. I ain't got a lot, but I think I got it made. Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to Down to Earth Outdoors, y'all. Uh, you guys can see what they caught right here. Oh, yeah. Big trophy largemouth bass. Get that oh, a little yeah. closer, Blaze. Let them show them what it's about. Big boy, baby. Look at these guys. Look at them fish. Troll this crap. Illinois right here, guys, for you. We're in Illinois. Uh, we're pulling them out of their dad, their pond. Uh, this is my dad over here. Oh, pretty crazy little fishing. Little Crazy fishing. But we're out here nice. fishing. Uh, you guys can see what we're catching. Blaze, Zane, you guys want to hold up that other basket, show them the bluegill out of this pond? Or you got here, let's, let's throw these back. So go ahead and get by the water. No, not yet. Let me see if I can get it on camera. All right. Now just gently let them go. You, you do, you do go ahead. Food. Whoever wants to go first. There you go. Good job. Go, Zane. One. No, don't two. toss them too far. Three. <laughs> One, two, three. three. There you go. There we go. Hopefully they'll okay. catch them one day again. Yeah, wash his off. I am. Hopefully. Hi guys, welcome back to Down to Earth Outdoors, and uh, we're here fishing, and we'll have a great night. Promise. And um, and please subscribe and click that video. Thumbs up. Yep. We love you. If if you if you want to have merch, then then please and and if we can see if we can get 100, uh, 100 subscribers, uh, sorry, a thousand, a thousand <laughs> subscribers, then we can then we can see if Do we can merch. get out merch. Yep. And guys, we're here uh, tonight, and uh, we're nighttime fishing. And well, as you can see, this is my pole and. My name's right there, and we can see Blaze over here, and uh, we have Bentley and Brittany, and and, uh, and and we have a great and we have a great time. Those boys over there. You want to show them the fish we caught? <laughs> oh yeah, and and so grab the hey, it's right there, Zane. Right go under nice. the line, go under the fishing lines. And, um, yep. This is a little like right here. Go ahead. Somewhere in there, it's hidden. Uh, is that? Grab that right there oh, on the oh, edge yeah, of the water. Yep. Pull her back up. It'll, you'll see it hey somewhere guys, through there. This is a little trick. Yep. There's some Pull fish up. that we caught right here. Now Zane and Blaze caught the biggest fish in here. They're largemouth bass. Yep. Let me get one out for you and see what it looks like. Yep. Here, let's put I, this camera I down. I can hold it. Yep. I'm the biggest. Let's put fish this station in. And holding and guys Let me grab you one. again oh, let's make sure we get a thumbs up yep. okay guys and subscribe and click that you. thumbs up again Tell what you caught. oh look at i'm counting baby this is what he caught right here go ahead you know what you're doing let me give you that let me see what it looks like behind the camera Pinch it hard. pull her up there big boy look Pinch at that guys there you go this came out of Illinois. A uh, lot of people would love to have trophy fish like this. Look at this, guys. Look how big that bass is. Good sized bass. Uh, him and his brother caught one. That's, yes, we're not messing with a... small fish around here. Well, Please not... subscribe to Down to Earth Outdoors, y'all. First things first, y'all. We got to catch a little bait. All I got is a bobber, a little sinker, a little swivel, a little weight. I already said sinker, but little pinch weight that's how i got it rigged up guys um if your fish like the twist on you and stuff that's why i got that swivel on there with the clip I just got a little hook a little crappie hook a little pan fish hook whatever you want to call it that's what it looks like guys it's on the ten dollar walmart reel the slingshot i've had a lot of fish with this guys recently let's get back to it Been 
out here for about 10 minutes. Already getting a bite. Check my bait though. He, he was pretty hard, so he may have took it. No, I just messed myself up there. They catch, uh, ah, they catch a channel cat right in this area where all this tree structure is. Get the bite right now. Ah. Yanked hard and pulled my barber down. Got about that deep. About 14 inches deep, something like that. Throwing it about uh, 9, 10 feet out in the water. It's not a very deep lake to begin with, so they're everywhere in here. refixing my worm here it, they'll take it right off there if you ain't got it threaded through all the way just make sure you leave enough room for your bar so you can set your hook and don't tangle your bob through colder temperature today but uh, the pressure's uh, up a lot higher than it was yesterday the day before the other day the pressure was down low and it was terrible fishing you guys can check your pressures on your local weather channels and stuff like that they'll give you your pressure barometric metric pressure I think that's what they call it
I'm at it, guys. I'm going to throw my catfish tight line poles out. I'm going to show you guys what I got rigged up here. You can get these at Wally World. You just, you literally, my main line probably came from Walmart, too. But that's 30-pound main line right there. Uh, I'd say, I think it's, uh, I don't remember what brand. I use them all. Uh, they're all about the same. Mono, I use monofilament. Don't use braid at all. This is 80 pound monofilament. You guys can see what kind of rig they got uh, rigged up. Got some beads, a couple swivels, a couple clips. Nice little bottom rig there, guys. I'm gonna put another hook right there. Um, or you can put a sinker right there. Depends on how you wanna do it. I think I'm gonna drop a sinker right there and not use three hooks. I'm just gonna use two hooks like that. And uh, we'll see what we do, guys. It's the first time using this rig from Walmart. I usually just do a sinker. I literally tie my sinker twice. A lot of guys don't even do this. I'll tie my sinker twice just like this. That's made to probably just slip up and down, guys. I just tie mine like that. Done it for many, many years. Nothing, you, you can pull them out of snags with that. It doesn't hurt it at all, guys. Uh, your, your lead will start looking like crap before my line breaks. So if that tells you anything. And I, that's about, uh, well, that ain't how close I, like, I usually tie my hook on the bottom of my main line and then have a sinker about up to here. Now, I have had to cut some line and took that hook off, and then I added this rig. So, you can see about the distance. I got that distance now, and I was thinking of that when I tied it. So, just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, depends on how you like, how deep you like it, uh, all that stuff. Like I said, I'm not a know-it-all, guys. I'm just uh, showing you all what I do. Uh, I I even rig stuff up myself and just see if it works. Uh, keep bait on. You can just take uh, pieces of thread and literally stitch it through the, the fish's skin just like you would do your own skin or a surgeon would. Wrap it around, stitch it again, and it'll stay on your hook longer, guys. Uh, I, I don't worry about that too much, though. It takes up a lot of time. I'm mainly uh, just trying to fish. So I'm going to go put a sinker on this, though, on the bottom. That's what I'm going to do here. I might take this one off and put a sinker on. I think that makes sense to do it like that obviously uh, that's what it looks like it's set up to do because they would have put beads down here if they wanted you to put a hook on here I'm assuming so I'm gonna drop a weight on this one uh, might have to tie a little lead or something but we'll see what we can do with this guys uh, I'll hit you back here in a minute when we're getting some bites stay tuned down to earth outdoors Welcome back, y'all. Got it rigged up. Uh, some uh, local man helped me out. I asked him uh, what he would do. This is the first time I've ever purchased one of these rigs like this. And uh, so I went ahead and put the weight on the bottom. I was just using an ounce sinker. So I used that tip he gave me. I'm going to go ahead and put my weight on the bottom because I, I did have it up here, which I mean, I'm sure it still would float somehow. But that's how I've always done it. I've had the weight before the hook. But now this time I'm going to have the weight, the very first thing on there, or the very last thing on there. So it'll be sitting in the bottom like this. So hopefully it don't get all tangled up. I'm gonna I got a feeling it's all going to be all tangled up and it's not going to be very good. But I'll let you guys know. Let's, uh, I'm going to bait her up and we'll throw her out and I'll get back at you guys. All right, y'all. Got my uh, two tight lines in the water. Got that new bottom rig on. Uh, it's a two for one got two hooks on one pole the one white rod the 888 Zipco 888 it's just got one hook a little sinker tight line on both and we're gonna fish for bait with my little slingshot y'all love this little thing for 10 bucks i recommend anybody go to walmart and get one of these the slingshot zipcos for 9.98 you won't regret it guys i mean it throws far it's smooth uh, I don't know how long it's going to last, but so far, so good, guys. I recommend it. Nice fighting a fish, too, on a small rod like this. I mean, I've caught a lot of catfish on here. You guys have seen most of them. Any fish I've caught on here, you've probably seen it.
took my bait. No, got the bobber slagged all the way down. Go try over here, guys. Guys, I also want to recommend uh, a little fishing backpack for 20 bucks at Walmart. Here, I'll sit down. I ain't got it how I want it just yet, but I'll show you guys. Open this up, you can fit. Looks like three, maybe four in there of your boxes. It comes with two of them. It's got a nice little cooler up here. Nice little, you know, soda pop cooler. Got a little rod holder. Put your tip through there. Pull your little bottom out. It rests along there, right there. Just like that. Set your bottom in. Unstrap that, it sticks out. You can probably fold it in half, get a lot better. We're going through tight spaces. Just uh, comes with one of these, a little small one for crappie, little hooks, weights. This, got my headlamps in there and stuff. And it's got some other pockets. I'm not gonna go through all of them. It's got these, you can stick stuff through. Got this one stuff through I recommend it guys poke something on there side pouch pliers right here get the pliers through get that up recommend them guys very comfy if you're always walking and stuff grab one I'm not sponsored by it or nothing guys it's Walmart for Christ for Christ's sake it's Walmart I don't think they sponsor anybody Get back at it, guys. I'm gonna try this spot right now. Oh man. Oh man. Alright, I 
got it. No worries. Always, uh, when you leave your poles, though, you either have bells or little bait clickers set because uh, they will take your rod in. A good catfish will. Drum, they love to take your rods in. Them things, they'll grab it and go. Getting a bite right now. Oh, got him. First fish of the day. Feels like a big one. Ah. Throw on your back. Ain't no keeper. Definitely ain't out of my brother's pond. You guys seen what I pulled out of there yesterday. Them are some, uh, I guarantee you, he has some record bluegill in there. We didn't even get to fish the other pond he's got. Hopefully one day we'll get to fish that. Uh, one day when he's home. I don't like going over there when he's not home, so. Yesterday, is, uh, his kids talked me into it. My uh, lovely nephews, I love to death. They talked me into coming over making a YouTube video with them, so that's what I did. You throw this in the bucket though, guys, just so I won't catch them again. Uh, well, actually, I'm gonna grab my net. Let me pause you guys real quick. Sorry about this. All right, y'all, got that bluegill in the live net. Let me slide you guys over here so you can see the action. Tilt you guys just a little bit. Whoa, 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 one handed. Whoa, whoa, there we go. Sorry for the finger there. Oh, bobber in the way. All right, we're good, guys. Sorry about the shakiness for a minute. Let's get back at it. Yee yee. Down to earth outdoors. Please subscribe. Hit that bell, y'all. Always doing fun stuff. Getting another one. Ah! that back keep y'all to see that bobber nope you cannot there you guys go yeah watch out for them trees in that line <laughs> i like to reel in throw back out reel in throw back out almost like bass fishing guys there ain't nothing wrong with that i'm a little impatient Get another nibble. Ah, could have had him. Come on, girl. Get on there. Odds are I took my bait. No. Still a little, little piece on there. Out. Like I said, guys, I recommend the Slingshot Zepco at Walmart, $9.98. Oh, I, I got a lot of big rods for uh, catfishing and stuff, and I just figured I'd get a small one for my bait pole. So I'm always bringing this one with me now. Love it. I took my bait. Sitting there talking, getting a bite. No? Dang it. They're playing with it right now. It's starting to warm up right now. The sun's partially hitting the water just a little bit, guys. Um, a little wind coming out of the north right now, northwest. West is that way to me. East is that way. Ah, we had one, guys. Took my bait. We'll get him. I'm gonna step over here and grab a worm real quick, guys. Uh, there is a tractor in the background. Hope y'all don't mind that. Uh, I'll be right back. I just wanna show y'all how I do my worms. Uh, I don't think I've ever showed that on video yet. Grab you a little worm out of there. I've, I've already obviously cut that. That's probably a eighth of a worm right there. You don't need much. The more you put on, the more they'll steal off you. I'm gonna pause this for a minute, guys. That guy wants to come right up on us. So. Sorry about that. Ooh, 
Welcome back, y'all. Sorry about that loud tractor in the background. A little bitty guy, but it's a loud one. I guess he's uh, it's these people that live right by the lake right here, and um, man, they act like they own it, guys. You know how some people are when they come out here fishing with all their 12 kids. They uh, they throw rocks, scream, but <laughs> I'm not here to complain, guys. I love fishing, but whew, some people. Uh, That's what we caught while he uh, that tractor was being all loud and stuff. Another bluegill, y'all. Put him in the live net so we don't catch him again. Still got a worm. We're on to something. But he sure didn't make a mess, man. All right, I got you, little buddy. Thank you for saving my hook. All right, y'all. Put her back in the net. Had a phone call there. That's why it cut off, guys. Sorry about that. Got our worm still. Let me rehook her here. guess how I do it I just I do thread it just like you probably almost like a sewing needle and out and out then on the very end whoop, just like that late set there you probably look at it like what Man, I thought that was, this lake's full of snakes guys you gotta be on your toes around here and trees you gotta watch them Jeez. come here calm down let me pull my bobber up a little bit. Here we go. Whoop. Come on, fishy, fishy. Should be biting any time, guys. Oh. Ah. He was on there, too. Oh. Ah. He's bait stiller right there, man. He's too quick. I can tell it's a bluegill, though. A little fast sucker. Still got my worm, though. Let's see. Let's catch him. Right there. He'll be back around. I'm sure you like the taste of that. Get on there. Took my bait, I'm gonna assume. Yep. Pull my bobber up too. Let me show you guys how I do that worm again. I don't think I showed it before the tractor interrupted us earlier. Get down here so y'all can see me. Like I said, just a little piece of worms all you need. I think my nephew actually told me that worms have five hearts, guys. Uh, you can Google it, he did. So go ahead and Google how many uh, hearts a worm has. They actually have five, I'm pretty sure. I didn't ever Google it, but I believe him. Love my nephew's death, guys. Uh, death to death. <laughs> you guys will see me uh, with them a lot, I'm sure. And their dad, and uh, I'm sure my other brothers, and anybody in my family, guys. They're all welcome to come on my channel. Uh, I don't, not hide nothing here, guys. Anybody's welcome. Um, I'm not trying to be a star of the show or nothing like that. Uh, I just want a successful YouTube channel because I'm putting a lot of effort in this, guys. Um, I think I like watching my own videos, so if you guys uh, ever get bored, like I said, just subscribe. Do us a favor. 
Uh, we're just trying to get to a thousand subscribers, me and my young nephews, and uh, we hopefully want to sell merch one day. They're all about that merch. And uh, I don't mind making some shirts that say Down to Earth Outdoors, y'all, and uh, we have some good designs thought up. Um, if we hit a thousand subscribers, we'll be giving a lot of shirts away and uh, not even going to charge much for them, guys. We're not out for money here. We're out to make friends and knowledge and share the wildlife with everybody. Just wanted to throw that in. Usually my nephew Blaze is good at that. He likes telling people to subscribe and all that. He knows what to say. But you guys see it how it is. Uh, pretty much uncut, unedited. Uh, it's, it's not hard to edit to our videos because we don't hide nothing. There's obviously a lot of comedy in our videos too. Got one. Little jumper. Little bluegill. Definitely not no keeper size, guys. A good little check to do with that. If it's hand size, it's pan size, baby. That ain't hand size right there. That's maybe like a two-year-old's hand, but let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. See that? When you lay a bluegill in your hand, it should fill all your hand out. All of it. That way and that way. That ain't no keeper. Now, if you're in a state that allows this for bait and stuff, that's definitely a good bait fish. Whoop. And you don't want to let your... Don't let your kids touch the fish like when it's still got the hook in its mouth and stuff, guys. That's a good little tip. If you're new to fishing, because these little bluegills, they're very uh, squirmy and they just throw that hook everywhere, guys. Just be careful with that. Especially if you're using rusty hooks and stuff. If you followed my channel, you know to always use the best hooks out there, guys. Because there's no point in using a cheap hook. That's the only thing you shouldn't cheap out on, guys. Let me put this in the basket and I'll be right back. Alright y'all, back again, Let's see if we still got a worm here, yep, oh. I'm going to re-stitch it though, don't throw it back out there like that guys, they'll definitely steal that off you, I like to, pretty much like a sewing needle, just sew the skin of the worm or Whatever you want to call it on the worm, we assume it's called skin. There you go, guys. Nothing special. I ain't reinventing the wheel here. Many people can do it a lot better than me, guys. I'm just uh, just wanted to show y'all what our life's about. It's what we do. Please subscribe. Get another one. Good hook set. A little bigger one there. Still ain't got all his colors though. Uh, that's a young one you can tell. When they still, when they look very pretty and dark purple, that's when they're usually pretty old and keepers. These right here are not keepers. I'm gonna throw in the live net though, just because uh, I don't want to catch it again. I tell they are. I don't like catching the same fish over and over. I will release them after you know when I get done with this spot, but I just don't. I like to see what's out there. You know, if you guys know what I mean. Like I said, guys, it's always a good tip to have a towel on you. Wipe your fish slime off you so you ain't getting all over your rods. That's one thing I'm worried about, guys. Uh, you can call me weird. Drop a comment if you do this, though. I always wipe my rods and uh, my reels real good after every, every fishing spot. 
And if you're at a pond, I usually go throw it at a lake. Like if I got my new uh, bass rods and bait casters. If you, hold on, we're getting nibbled. If you got your open face or your bait casters where you can see your line at a pond, it gets really dirty. So I like to just stop by the lake on the way home, throw her out and reel her back in and clean it up real good for you guys. You know how some ponds, you know, they're small and they just, a lot of stale water, not a lot of fresh water coming in, little creeks spilling into it, not a lot of water movement. It's, they're gonna get a lot of mucky, you know, more mucky and more muddy. Probably took my bait. No, nope. he about had it though. Left it out there a little bit longer. I re-threaded it again, guys. Nothing special, I ain't reinventing the wheel here. But I can't stress enough about this Zepco slingshot, y'all. They, I got it. I think they got it in red, blue, and pink. My local Walmart, they only had red and blue. I was gonna get a pink one for my old lady. They didn't have it, so she went with the blue one. Probably took my bait. I was sitting there talking. Nope. Again. Got four bluegills so far, about two I've seen that dropped off my hook, but that's okay. Nothing on them catfish poles over there, guys. I'm gonna have to go recheck them here in a minute. Ain't got nothing. I'll bring you guys down to the water with me for a minute. Get some live action. Hold on, let me get you guys set up here. Just don't fall in the water. <laughs> Phew. That'd be my luck too, guys. I don't have the best luck in the world. Hope y'all are enjoying down there at the outdoors. Uh, we're gonna hit a different spot here in a minute. We've been here about probably a total of 45 minutes now. No catfish nibbles. Got my bait alerts over there. Nothing's cranking out on them. Bluegill just got snagged. So I think we're gonna call this place uh, it for a day. Christopher Lake in Christopher, Illinois, y'all. We're at the old one. They got two lakes. I don't know where the other one is because I ain't searched for it. I've been fishing here, so we will be there eventually, though, I'm sure. Now, on bluegill, guys, uh, they're easy to catch. They really are. They're underrated, too. They're good eating. They really are. Um, you can cook them whole like the trout method. Literally just clean their guts up, put it in the freezer, and then pan fried if you want. That's A lot of people do that. Me, I don't prefer that way because there's a lot of bones in there. I just take it right behind the pectoral fin and... Just like you do a catfish almost, just find the ribs, go, uh, you gotta go over the ribs and then back down and then towards the tail. I'll make some skinning videos for y'all. I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos on that guys. I'm not here to copycat a bunch of videos and I'm just here to show y'all what we do. Uh, this is our life. We're not trying to mimic nothing. I think fishing's been around for thousands of years, I'm sure. If not millions, we don't know. But I, I'd say, you know, oh, don't do that. Nice little backlash. 
and you guys can come out. You guys can bring your kids out to fish. Just make sure you got your fishing license. You don't need them for your kids. It's always that fishing license go towards the wildlife and stuff around the area, the fishery, all that stuff, guys. Uh, hopefully, it's not just wasted tax money. I'm going to assume they put it back to where it should be, in the, the lakes and everywhere local, you know, wherever you buy your fishing license at. Mine was $17 this year. It's not bad, guys. Uh, $17 to save you hundreds of dollars for getting tickets of people walking up on you and uh, giving you tickets for it. The more poles, the worse your ticket is. Um, check your regulations, guys. Uh, every every lake's different. Um, some ponds you can't even fish in. Always look for posted. Uh, no trespassing. Obviously, don't go past that. Uh, just look for all kinds of... Just make sure you're aware of your surroundings is what I'm saying. Don't be fishing on somebody's property that you ain't got permission. Anything to get you in trouble, guys. Fishing's a very wonderful thing to do, and you can make it unwonderful if you don't follow the law. And the moral of this story is, guys, this Zepco slingshot was $10. Hold on a minute. Ah! This Zepco slingshot was $10, guys. Let me show you what else I got on here. It ain't nothing fancy. You can bring your kids out for cheap. Get them a couple. You got four kids, buy four of these rods, guys. That's 40 bucks. That's the price of one combo, of a catfishing combo, a cheap one. So get you a pack of these hooks at Walmart, the crappie assortment or whatever. Get you a pack of those for a dollar or something, two dollars maybe. Come with plenty of hooks, maybe like 40, I think, 30 or something. They don't, they actually last, guys. They're eagle claw, I do believe. The one, this one is. They're eagle claw, they're cheap. This is just a swivel with a little clip, barrel swivel with a clip, whatever you want to call it. And this is a little pinch weight, guys. There's nothing special to it. Uh, all this stuff costs under 20 bucks. Let's say you got four kids, you're looking at like 50 bucks plus some worms. Now, my recommendation, I keep a, I do buy like one worm box for the year and just to keep my worms in because it's the little foam boxes. But don't buy worms, guys. Go out to your yard and flip over leaves and rocks and stuff. There's all kinds of worms out there. My dad taught me that, guys. You ain't got to pay. You, you ain't got to pay for bait. Um, catfish, they love bluegill, cut up bluegill, shad, uh, night crawlers, everything that you can find where they're at. That's what they're gonna hit off the most. They don't hit off a stink bait, none of that stuff, guys. They will eventually. If you got one that's coming up across your little packed stink bait rig that you got from walmart or wherever bass pro shop whatever yeah they're gonna hit it they come across it but if you put some live bait out there some bluegill that they're actually looking for you're gonna get a lot more hookups and a lot more just straight up eating it big flatheads low eating whole bluegill now channel cast you're gonna have to cut your bait up a little bit smaller or you're gonna get them nibbling at it and your line will always be popping but they'll never you'll never get that hook set Always, if, if that's the problem, go with a little bit. Cause I use big hooks for catfishing, and if you don't get, if you're not getting like a lot of hookup ratios, but you're getting a lot of bites, drop your hook size and drop your bait size. So like, if you're using like a quarter of a bluegill, I'm sorry, usually like thirds. Like cut off the tail, use the head, and then the middle, and maybe like the. I usually cut it in three pieces. That's a small bluegill. Now, you have to cut it half of that size, so like sixth it up. Just little bitty tiny pieces and stick it on that smaller hook and you'll get, it's probably more likely it's smaller channel cat or smaller catfish trying to bite on it. And you're just not around the mommy and poppies, you know what I mean? So it's always just, just switch up your tactic, tactics, guys. I mean, that's all it is. It's, uh, you gotta find what they're biting on and if they're not biting on something, switch them up. Uh, you got crappie jigs. Uh, put a couple uh, jigs on one line like I showed you. Put different colors on there. Whatever color they keep biting on, switch them on to that color. You're going to get a lot more hookup ratios. I recommend waders. I've had these forever. They ain't leaked yet. I don't even know what brand they are. I think they're, they're called Bone Dry Redhead. 
get you some waders. Uh, I recommend those. You can get out a little further. If you're a bank fisherman like me, you can get out a little further and get away from them snags and stuff sometimes, guys. It's all about uh, just trying different stuff and having fun. That's all it is. Bring your kids out and have fun with you. My kid and my old lady, they're at her grandpa's right now, so that's where they're at, or they would be with me. Um, I'm enjoying some free time right now. We're getting ready to have another boy on the way. His name's Bodie, so I got one named Bentley, one named Bodie. So let's get back to it, guys. Let me put a worm on here before I throw it out without a worm talking to you guys. Let me grab that real quick. Doing the same thing, guys. Just sewing needle and my worm on my hook, pretty much. Just like a sewing needle, just in out, in out. Uh, don't ever just slip it right through the middle. They'll suck that thing off like a sucker, guys, every time. They're pretty slick, uh, especially like places that get fished a lot, guys. They're very, very slick and stealthy. They know what they're doing. They see that bobber on top of that. They know what they're doing. Sometimes take your bobber off. That helps. Uh, sometimes fish that uh, a lot of fishery, you know, a lot of lakes that's been fished out or, you know, just always fishing. They uh, fish do pick up on the bobber hitting the water and stuff like that. You, you know, throw out a weight and a hook. See what they do. Get you a little crappie pole, guys. Mix it up a little bit. It's all about having fun and catching different fish. I don't, uh, I'm not racist. I like all kinds of different fish, guys. Uh, I don't just catch catfish. Uh, I catch anything that bites. I love to reel in, guys. It's all about the fight of the fish, about getting them in. Uh, most of them get released. I do love eating catfish, though, and I do love me some good-sized bluegill eating. Crappie eating, that's pretty good, too bass i mean i like bass eating but i like looking at bass better than i do eating them so I, I usually any largemouth bass i throw back they're one of my favorite fish to catch they're just uh you got to be really on it with the hook set with them they uh when they grab you gotta you know you gotta set that hook aggressively with bass bluegill sometimes they'll just catch you know take it and run off with it most of the time, you're going to have to set the hook with bluegill, too. Obviously, you wouldn't want some big catfish hook on the end of my bobber right now. I hope you all agree with that. You're not going to get bluegill ain't going to bite on a hook that's half the, you know, half the size they are. You just got to, sometimes it's about common sense. Uh, I know that sounds like a smart, a smart elk way to say it, but it really is common sense sometimes, guys. Just... Look at your surroundings. Think about what you should do different. Try some different stuff. If it ain't working, go to a different location. If you know you're doing everything right, go to a different location. I'm not even talking about walking down five feet. I'm talking about packing it up and having to go to somewhere else, guys. That's what it's part of. Uh, today, it's a little slow on catfish, obviously, but we're having fun catching bluegill. So we're going to stay here a little bit longer. Uh, if I don't get bites here in like 10 minutes, we're going to pack it up. Y'all see me at the Muddy River here in a minute. It's just what I do. Uh, I try to stay close to my house. My old lady's pregnant right now. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't call her my old lady. My, my fiance, she's pregnant right now. So I'm gonna try to, you know, I stay as close as I can to that. So I have never fished outside of Illinois, guys. So please drop a comment on how your fishery is in your local pond or lake, guys. I, I like to know about how the I, I don't get out much as like as far as vacationing and stuff like that. Uh, me and my parents and my family, we went to Florida and Tennessee and stuff like that, but I've never had a chance to fish. So I'm definitely bringing my fishing poles to Florida with me this year, guys. You guys will see that first time I've ever fished in the ocean. So I'm excited for that. Hopefully we catch a shark. <laughs> no, we usually go to Panama City Beach, guys. The, it's not very, uh, very expensive trip, I don't believe, you know, for Panama City. It, for us, it's like 12, 14 hour drive. We do live in Southern Illinois, so. 
And it, we do have beautiful fishing out here, guys. If you guys ever want to visit Wren Lake uh, in Illinois, please do. Uh, we need the, the tourists and stuff like that to support our local lake, guys, like anywhere. And there is a lot of bass tournaments on at Wren Lake and all kinds of activities always going on. Watercrafting. Uh, there is a... Got one. All kinds of stuff to do in Wren Lake. We're at the Christopher Lake, guys, like I mentioned. That's a little bigger one. A little bigger one there. But let me show y'all. Still not hand size. So, see what I'm talking about? Oh! See what I'm talking about with the hook, too, though? The hook's still in the mouth, and it's jumping around. Don't let your kids get that hook out before your kids touch the fish. Teach your kids to, like I said yesterday, when you grab a bluegill, brush them back fins down, just like that. Don't ever come at the back of it and try to grab it. Always tell your kids, don't ever come in the back of a bluegill and grab it. Will, it will cut the crap out of you guys. You can see that's what that, you know, that's their defense, some of it. So they ain't got much, you know, they ain't got arms to fight with. So that's their defense. Got to think about that, guys. Uh, not going to bore you with educational purposes, but we're going to put her in the live net so we don't catch her game. We're going to get back at her. I'm going to leave her rolling, guys. You guys can enjoy hearing the birds chirpy chirp. And hopefully, my phone don't fall in the water. Well, guys, we had a bite on the catfish pole on that, uh, on the 808, and nothing, so we're going to keep rolling. My bait alert didn't go off, and I seen my pole bending over, and so I don't know if it was just, a, you know, a stick coming through or what, but I don't like that, that my bait alert ain't working. It works just fine when I pull on it, so I don't know about that one. Say it's a stick or something came across the line, guys. You gotta, sometimes you gotta wash that too. To me, though, guys, uh, you can either make a fishing day a very hard day, very uh, work, you know, workful day, or you can make it a fun and joyful day, you know. Uh, just get your fishing license, like I've said, please. Uh, I ain't no cop, but. I do recommend you guys get your fishing license just so you can go and not have to hide in places or anything like that. It takes a lot of effort to not have your fishing license. You got to walk way away and all that stuff, guys. I'm sure I've done it a year or two, but it's not fun. I, I'm at the point in my life, I just, uh, I go by the law. It's for, that's for sure. That's one of those good laws to have is a fishing license, I believe. It lets you, you know, if you're going to go pay the money, you're more than likely going to throw some fish back that should be thrown back and have a good conversation, conservation, sorry, to wildlife. So it's all about that, guys. It's all about wildlife. To me, it is. If I don't catch fish, I still get to see you know, wildlife, but I do live in the town right now, and it sucks. I don't want to live in town right now, but we found a house contract for deed at the time, uh, like four years ago, four or five years ago. Oh, dang it. And that's where we're at. We're at in the middle of town right now, but one day we'll get out and have some acreage and uh, hopefully have my own palms. Trying to get, trying to get one here. I don't know what he's doing though. Welcome back to Down to Earth Outdoors, y'all. Getting back to it uh, at an old broke down boat ramp. 
same place, same lake. As y'all can tell, they take very good care of this lake. Um, let me show you this, this ramp here. Oh yeah, love it. Can get right out there and fish right off the dock. Oh yeah, love it. That's why I said we're waiters, y'all. <laughs> Let's get to the dock if we can. A little sketchy, so uh, we're gonna say no with the camera in my hand. A little sketchy. Looks wet and slippery. I'm gonna post it right here without a leaf flying in the lens. I said to have this backpack guys uh, this backpack guys you can have a little soda pop whenever you need one bring your kids some water stuff like that you a couple soda pops keep the fish and stuff rod everything in there guys recommend it all right y'all we're going to a different spot uh, you're going to see me back at my brother's house where he will try his other lake out. So stay tuned for that, y'all. Catching these fish like they're gold. 